Reality Enabled Asset Layout or using a point cloud as a factory asset. Now this process all starts with you taking pictures of a given object. And for this example, I took a lot of pictures of my Mini Cooper. About 150 pictures from all different angles above and below the object. I also made sure to record a measurement of one of the objects for later use. Then it was time to go to recap360.autodesk.com. This is where you can load all of your pictures to the cloud and begin the process of turning these pictures into a scan. You simply give the project a name and then for this example I chose the five credit option. I turned on smart cropping and smart textures and I chose all the possible file types. When you submit the project it tells you that this costs five cloud credits. After a while you receive an email inviting you to review the scan. Here you can see the scan of the Mini Cooper and I think it's scanned very well. For 150 pictures this is a fantastic scan of an object. After I reviewed the scan I downloaded it to my local computer. Again for this example I chose to download an RCS file which is a recap scan. After I downloaded the file I opened it in Autodesk Recap. I simply imported the scan and launched the project and here you can see the point cloud that was generated from my original pictures. The first thing I did in recap was to update my origin or adjust the user coordinate system for the scan. I clicked the point and then I chose points to align the X, Y and Z axis. Then it was time to remove as many points as possible. I put the scan in orthographic view and then I used the window selection tool to remove a majority of the points. I also used the planar selection tool to remove all the points on the ground. And finally I cleaned up the scan using the fence selector. The fence selector allows you to simply draw a polygon fence around the points that you want to delete. I chose many different angles to use the fence selection tool. Again, putting the view in orthographic mode made deleting these points very easy to do. When the scan was cleaned, I exported the scan as an RCS file. Then I imported that scan to an Inventor part file. Here you see me opening up Inventor and attaching the point cloud to the part file. I inserted it at the origin and then I made sure to check that my coordinate system was exactly as I specified in Recap. I also added a couple of work points so that I can measure the wheel and scale it appropriately. Here you can see the dimension I came up with and then I calculated what the scale factor would be to scale the point cloud to the appropriate size. Now that the point cloud is measuring correctly we can move on. I adjusted the view cube to orient my scan properly and then I began the process of sketching the 2D representation of the Mini Cooper. I selected the plane, created a center line and started to trace the point cloud now this did take some time but it's well worth it. It's actually a lot easier to trace a point cloud than it would be to model a complete Mini Cooper using traditional modeling techniques. When the sketch was complete I converted it to a surface using the boundary patch command. Now it's time to begin the asset publishing process. To do this, I'm going to add a work point that I'll use later as an insertion point. And then I'll open up the asset builder. I'm going to start with the landing surface command. And I'm going to select the XY plane as the landing surface and the work point as the insertion point. Now I want to fill out all my file properties. And this is a very important step. We want this information to feed our downstream processes. Then it's time to publish the asset. 
I click Publish and Save, and as I'm saving, I choose the proper category and location. A very important step here is to click the 2D options and to choose the sketch you created as the 2D representation. I'll click OK and publish the asset. Before I release this asset into production, I need to make sure I test it. So the first thing I do is open up AutoCAD and bring in the Mini Cooper asset. Here you can see the simple block that's used to represent the Mini Cooper in AutoCAD. Then of course we want to test the asset in Inventor as well. Now before I test my asset, I'm going to bring in a few more of my point cloud assets. You see the building that I brought in and the forklift? I also have a CNC machine that I can bring in and represent with a point cloud, along with a lathe and a drill press. Now if I go outside the building, I'll bring in my pickup truck that I scanned last year, and here's the Mini Cooper that we just created. I'll drop it right alongside the truck. Now I also want to test this by creating a drawing inside of Inventor. That's right, I can create a drawing from these point clouds. It acts like any other Inventor drawing. I can select the assets and add all of the sketch lines in place. I can add a parts list along to the side and balloon all of the items as if they were regular Inventor parts. Now just like every other Inventor presentation I've ever done, if I go back and modify the assembly, in this case I'm going to add a generator to the bed of the pickup truck. When I go back to the drawing, you'll see that that's represented correctly. I can add the balloon, and check the drawing and make sure it's updated correctly. So that's how I created a point cloud with my cell phone and used it as a factory asset. If you have any questions about the contents of this demonstration, please feel free to contact your local Imaginate Technologies account manager.